Big Bang uh, theory seems to have been, I'm talking about the actual event, not the TV not show, the TV show uh, <laughs> seems to have been proven even more right. And there's now this talk about the inflation hypothesis. What is it and why is it important? Okay, so recently there was a result, uh, an observation that uh, a, a appeared to confirm predictions made in the inflationary universe. So in the... Inflationary meaning universe yeah, so began it turns out and started... Blowing. This idea, which was an appendage to the Big Bang, was put forth back in the 1970s when inflation was... <laughs> that word had much higher currency than it does today. So it's stuck and it's been with us ever since. And it refers to an early period of the universe, really early, like fractions of a second after the original explosion, where the universe has a rapid expansion faster than the speed of light, rapid expansion. It is, it is scientifically um, uh, valid, uh, that, that prediction and that idea, and it, it had a whole suite of, of expectations that you should look for if it were true. So people started exploring the universe. Oh, yep, they put, check in that box. Yep, that's true too. Yep, hey, got that one right as well. Why does it matter? Why does it matter to know how the universe was born? What, what, what does it that, tell us? Was that us? your actual question? That was my actual question. What, is it, what are the consequences of that? You know, that uh, are there any scientific consequences that, may, that, that you know, have some application? Yeah, I think there... We, we so can, the fact that, that Einstein was right about relativity in a, in a chain led to nuclear fission. Yeah, I, I would say... I, say, I, I want to uh, unpack the question and... and, it's, and split it out. Uh, you can, on the surface, say, what does it matter? Does it help the homeless person in the street? No. Does it, does it help your show? No. All right, except I'm here talking about it. <laughs> does it, uh, there are a lot of things, my answer is just flat out no. And, but what drives people to do it? Because there is a boundary between what is known and unknown, and some percent of our species is curious about the answers to that to what lies on the other side of that boundary, and they explore it. Such explorations of the past, for example, in the 1920s, quantum physics was discovered. Mm -hmm. If you were around back then in this show, you say, why do I need to care if there are particles inside an atom? I, I make a cup and I'm good, I'm, who, who cares? <laughs> the entire information revolution, the IT revolution, would not exist without our understanding of the Right. conduct of an atom on its smallest scales, brought to you by an entire right. branch of physics, discovered at a time where no one is thinking why it has any relevance at all. And, I, and I, the I, same with nuclear energy, right? I mean, it, it is that... No, people, or the military knew, if there's energy in the atom, let's get it okay. and use it. That, that, so that had an application. Immediately. Uh, immediately. That, that's why physics was so well-funded mm -hmm. over the 20th century, and it fueled the Cold War politics of it. Uh, but I want to take sort of simpler things, like Einstein wrote a research paper on the stimulated emission of radiation. A brilliant, beautiful paper. If that's all he did in life, that's what he'd be most famous for. Okay? Why? He didn't say to himself, hmm, with this research, you can make barcodes. <laughs> no. It was just a curiosity about the conduct of atoms in the presence of a radiation field, and it is the foundation of the laser. The, you can't imagine modern life without a laser. This is the photoelectric effect. Uh, no, no, that's, that's, that's a whole other thing he did. Oh, okay. that's, I mean, this result, stimulated emission, is under-publicized in his output. The photoelectric effect he got the Nobel Prize for. This one went unmentioned, but I'm telling you it's the foundation for the laser. You can't, you can't imagine modern life without a laser and all the different things we do with it, from cosmetic surgery to, uh, uh, to LASIK surgery to fix your eyesight to barcoding, yes, to CD players, Blu-ray players. Uh, all right, so you, you're... So we can say, let's not explore. Go ahead. Here's a ticket back to the cave. I'll meet you there. We'll build a fire together. <laughs>